Wednesday, October the 24th, saw the start of the Rector's Conference in the Patriotic Hall at the Carolinum, the heart of Charles University. The two-day conference was attended by representatives from prestigious foreign universities, including Oxford or the University of Vienna, and was launched by Charles University Rector Tomasz Zima. His opening address reflected on the upcoming 100th anniversary of the founding of Czechoslovakia. It is this anniversary of the founding of the independent state, which came into existence following World War I, that has provided an ideal frame within which to reflect on democratic values, the humanist tradition and the role of universities within a broader societal context, both past and present. Notable speakers on the first day included not only former Czech Prime Minister Petr Pithart, but top European representatives such as Professor Luciano Sasso, President of Unica, Professor Ludovic Tilly, the Chair of the Coimbra Group, Dr. Hartmut Meyer, the Director of Europeum, and Professor Kurt de Catellare of Lero. Among the topics at the forefront of the first day of the conference is the future of the common European project in the time of Brexit, migration, and populist turbulence. I asked the speakers about the impact that the current climate is having on democratic values, tolerance, or even open debate. Where is the role of the universities in sort of countering where things have been going politically? Well, it's clear that universities, as I said earlier uh, this afternoon, are one of the very few societal forces which really can counter this wave of populism, this wave of uh, dividing people, setting people up against each other. And so it's clear that universities have to take their responsibility, have to speak up and have to do what they have been doing for, for ages, namely uh, guide society in the direction of democracy, humanism, responsibility and things like that. And so that's why it is a bit worrying, uh, and not only a bit, but a lot worrying, uh, what I presently see in the European Parliament, where we are discussing a new framework program, which is so important for universities, not only here, but for the whole of Europe, a new framework program on research and innovation, where I see this same contamination of populism uh, popping up in this debate on the next framework program for research and innovation, where uh, MEPs are really using notions like Europe first uh, and let's make sure that we keep countries out of the framework program and if we allow them in that at least they don't take out too much of the budget and things like that. So, so this is for me really a novelty that we also see this now uh, so explicitly in the European Parliament in the field of research and innovation. And it's clear that this Europe first approach uh, in, in research, innovation or education is not going to be very helpful. It's only going to lead to losers across the board, as well the European Union, as well the member states, as well political parties in the member states, the universities in the member states and things like that. So it's clear, as several people said also here this afternoon, we need a strong, united Europe. For us, the, the topic, for instance, of migration is a very important one because we, we feel in university that we should actually welcome them more and especially in better conditions. It's not uh, acceptable that these migrants, they come to Europe uh, after a very long journeys and suffering so much while we could find you know, better solutions for them. It seems to me as well that given Europe's turbulent history, this is an extremely poignant point because on the one hand uh, we've had, uh, uh, okay there was the war in Yugoslavia uh, which can't be forgotten but uh, a relatively long uh, time of peace uh, and but there was a period when there was a huge movement of uh, people so we should be more understanding almost than anyone. No, exactly. Uh, the European Union, actually, even the example of Yugoslavia is interesting because actually at that time that was not part of the European Union. So we can say that in the last 70 years in European Union we did not have wars, but actually in Europe, outside the Union, we had wars in Yugoslavia and also in Ukraine. So this is a good example to say that actually the European Union is a good vaccine against violence, against war. I know you're not going to like it, but I'm going to ask you about uh, Brexit a little bit, <laughs> because the thing that you said is that you have it for basically three meals a day. And if my blood pressure goes down, I even have a Brexit injection for tea. Um, I think it is, at least in the British context, the um, political topic of the decade. And if we get it right, it's all right. If we get it wrong, it will go terribly wrong. 
What is important to emphasize is that the common European research space needs to be protected. And I fear that some people on the continent um, have a moment of schadenfreude, thinking the British will leave, therefore we can get a bigger slice of the pot. And I think that's short-sighted to have that transactional approach, not keeping the European research space together because British universities are competitive, there's world-class research, but it depends on cooperation across the continent. And if we lose that, we lose global competition. Actually, these values date from the Middle Ages and are still indeed very important to the academic community. Not only because they represent really uh, what we should have as a goal in the way we perform education, in the way we perform research, but this is also the way we should engage with society, to work with integrity, to work with transparency and to bring uh, an, an enlightened look, an enlightened view to the different events happening in our society. The Rector's Conference wraps up on October the 25th.